to know. She has to go. What's, what's something that you always carry with you? Specifically, I need to talk about the hot sauce. Really? You, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you getting information right now? <laughs> hot sauce. <laughs> really? Yes. No, it has hot sauce yes. in her bag. I have Heinz ketchup. No, seriously. Is it working? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, she's better than the black people. <laughs> We're not going to get into sophisticated politics. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is it working? or honestly comments of any kind to anyone mentioned in this video on behalf of me or yourself. The purpose of this video is to give my commentary and opinion on matters of public concern. Thank you. Welcome to I Can't Use Technology. Oh my god. It would probably help if I pressed the play on the... Okay. I'm going to turn it all the way up. Yeah, that's fine. It's going to be stressful. It doesn't matter if it's loud. It's loud for me. Okay. So, question. Question. Was the Hillary Clinton hot sauce prank... What, what would you even call that thing? Media juggernaut. Was the Hillary Clinton Breakfast Club hot sauce in my bag media juggernaut viral moment? Perhaps a strategically orchestrated political propaganda push by Sean P. Diddy, Puff Daddy Combs, and Jay-Z. This is like a spinoff of the Beyonce video, to be honest. It is. I thought we should reacquaint ourselves with this clip, which I have admittedly done, I don't know, probably how many views does this have? It has 276,000. I'm going to say something point, one point something thousand is probably just me. I have psych, I have body language analyzed. Do you know I'm a YouTube body language analyst now? I've been doing body language analysis on my other channel. I have body language analyzed. Oh my God. I'm going to refrain from doing too much today, but I'm going to just say, I don't know any of these people's names except Charlemagne and Hillary and this lady on the right. She is like physically repulsed she's repulsed you could watch this video like at least a dozen times only watching her and so see something new she's disgusted each time okay anyway i thought we should watch it together let me turn the captions on it's just so weird i don't even know what to even say about it first first let's go in chronological order before you press play before you ever press the play where are they I'm not a regular viewer of The Breakfast Club, but I've seen a lot of clips and he's usually sitting in like a throne. They're usually in a real studio. This is like a lunch table. They should have changed the name to The Pokino Club for this episode. I mean, doesn't it look like the spades tournament, the Pokino, you know, the like the ladies in the neighborhood used to get together and play cards and have these little tables. That don't look like you're gonna eat breakfast there, first of all. And where are they? Also, when was, this was 2016? That was literally formation of whatever came out, that Lemonade came out that year. So it's like a double, a double PR album push. He goes, are you getting information right now? And she knows yes. what he's talking about. And I think one of them says hot dog, hot dog. No. Hot sauce in my bag swag. Which, it, well, you know, counter argument, it was very popular. It was very popular. I think it's Beyonce's best piece of work as an album, personally. So maybe he was just talking about it. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe it was a PR push. But why am I saying that? Why am I saying it might have been some type of political propaganda PR push? Well, I just told you that it would behoove, you know, somebody to have cross promotion between Beyonce and Hillary Clinton. But when you zoom in on, up on the microphone, Hillary Clinton is cackling into you. Hey, we're gonna it says Revolt. Isn't that P. Diddy's news network station channel? Revolt. What is P. Diddy's news station microphone doing in this Pokino back room with Charlemagne and Hillary and another lady looks like she don't want to be any closer to Hillary Clinton than she has to wishing she could have had that big table back. What's even going on here, first of all, before you even press play? It before looks you even like press a play. High school cafeteria. Totally, a voting poll. This is somewhere you go to vote, which does make sense. Like there probably are like wild Hillary Clinton types just always kind of slithering about in those voting polls back rooms. My granny used to work the voting polls. She'd get paid like, you know, $100 a day or whatever. Okay, so that's before you press play. But now I really want to zoom in to something I find to be a piece of evidence. I don't know. I don't know why P. Diddy's microphone is here. In 2016, it was still like fully, totally only affiliated and operated, I think, with P. Diddy and with Revolt. But it does appear there was some type of exchange of some type of ownership. Because Breakfast Club plays like somewhere else now or something. It's like, I don't know, moved on. It looked like it might have got acquired, but it doesn't actually say that. So I don't know if it's still P. Diddy involved or not in 2016. I'm just wondering what his microphone's doing there. So when it's the beginning of just this clip, it's like so obvious to me based on my non-expert body language analysis opinions speculation theory that is awkward first of all 
awkward. You could cut the tension with a knife seven years later through the screen. It's just so awkward. The lady on the right don't like Hillary Clinton, I can tell as a person. Maybe ideologically, maybe she's gonna vote for her, but she don't like her, she's scared of her. She's probably, she's acting like a breath stink. She's acting like she's scared venom's gonna fly out of Hillary Clinton's eyes or something. And then it's obvious to me that there's a remaining question that needs to be still discussed. And it's the hot dog in the bag swag. Why do I keep saying that? Hot sauce. Hillary Clinton hot sauce in the bag swag. It's obvious to me and my, y'all can watch and make your own decision, make your own thing. We just watched it all together. But look, don't it kind of look like there's one more remaining item on the agenda, the last joke to kind of cut this weird tension and they've pre-discussed it. Look at the mouth. Ethan is going to slow the mouth down a few times and, and replay it, okay? I just want y'all to really, what is the man doing with his mouth? And then right as he's doing it, he stops himself and his other little pal over here, I don't know his name, he then says, what's what and then lady over here she kind of you know she's reading the room and she's like oh yeah it's the hot sauce question that's what i think went down okay mouth reading expert we need one bad for a lot of videos yes if anybody is a body language reading analyst expert, particularly if you do it in, you know, as a witness in court, I would love to have a long-term collaboration because this comes up so much body language. And also anybody knows how to read lip, you know, mouth reading, lip reading, it comes up all the time. We need a long-term collaboration. Or just comment down below what they're saying. But I, I need the information. I need to be able to contact this person repeatedly, Ethan. Like, it comes up a lot. And now I'm having to do this every time. It's an unpaid gig, but I'll shout you out. Thank you. Uh, what are we doing here? Okay, yes. All right. Watch the mouth. No more questions? They said no. She has to go. She what's what's something that you always do? Hot Just sauce. Okay. One more. I, I need to. Oh, man. She answers the question so fast. It's so fast. And she said it like she just finished her word at the spelling bee. Maybe. M A Y B E. Maybe. That's what it's given. That's the word I lost on in the first grade spelling bee. Oh, I disliked the video just now on accident. I'm gonna leave it. It was the Lord. Okay, watch the mouth. Ethan's gonna slow it down for y'all. Let me slow it down. Let me do playback speed of something. What you think? 0. 0.5? He's saying something, y'all. That man is not just chewing bubble gum. I can promise you that. Okay, I'm gonna do it at normal one more time. Okay, then we gotta move on from this. I'm just saying, what's the man saying? Look like it says puff. That's Puffy squished. Puffy question. Puffy question. That's what it looks like he's said. Puffy <laughs> but he might be saying like, boy, I don't know. He looks mad. He looks like short of temper, like Mark Leta kind of. Like, then the lady, she says it. I, I don't know if any of this is true. Well, I could be making it up. this is the only part of the interview I've ever seen also. Me too, but it, I haven't gone out of my way to look any of it up really. No more questions? He said no, she has to See, go. See, it's, like, it's like coaching, like no more questions. No more questions. Never got the question. Puffy question. Yeah. No more questions. That's what it's giving. <laughs> then it's like on cue. What do you always carry? Hot shots. Hot shots. What's what's something that you always carry with? And you? also, Ethan, let's do a slow down zoom in of just Hillary Clinton. What she just did with her head. She goes while he's going. No, she says she has to go. And and here she's going. <laughs> do a side by side. Really? You, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you getting information right now? Hot <laughs> sauce. <laughs> Hot sauce in my back. One of the Thetans just entered. The Thetan. <laughs> Hot sauce. <laughs> Hot sauce wow. in my back, swag? This Hot reminds sauce. me. Really? Yes. Now, I just watched a whole video about how the dark side of veneers. It came to mind when I watched Hillary do this. <laughs> Hot sauce. Really? Yes. Now yes. listen, I just want you to know, people see this and say, okay, she's pandering to black people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is it working? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of them choked and then she said it right into the revolt. It's like a PR stunt. So this is really the only clip that was going around. It's just like, what a good PR move. You advertise her, right? You get to perhaps legitimately use campaign finance funds. I don't know how campaign finance laws work, so don't quote me on anything about that. But you know, um, they look to be in the campaign finance office or at least somewhere where they're doing voting polls, backrooms activities. And it just, you know, it doesn't zoom in on her on that angle until the pandering part. The most viral part is the revolt ad. Like the most viral parts of the video up close on her face with that revolt right there. You can't really see it from this angle what it's the big, you know, zero minutes, zero seconds. See how long it takes them to go into that no, revolt. It's on the most viral. What's, what's something that you always carry face. with you? Hot Just, sauce. Even that. Really? You, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you it's getting information right now? <laughs> <laughs> Hot sauce. Hot sauce in my back? What? 
That's us. Really? Yes. She's like Mark yeah, Zuckerberg don't know, know what to do with her hand. Because it is the most obvious, obvious criticism that she would face even before saying that. Even if they never talked about hot sauce bag swag, she going here on this channel doing this would have been considered by a lot of people, a big criticism would have been pandering because she's obviously not interested in the black community. I've heard this criticism. Not everybody believes and agrees, but it's like, that is a big one on the list. And so it's like, they're gonna say it anyway. So why don't we get a gotcha out of it? So historically the context at the time, and you'll probably remember this as I mention it, 2016 lemonade thing, right? There was a lot of hashtag discourse and I used to be all up in the cult I, I saw the discourse up close and the discourse was it's an album Beyonce made because her husband cheated on her then there's this Becky with the good hair and the Becky with the good hair comment was interpreted by many to mean it was to say you cheated on me with a white woman or this colorist kind of like competition or whatever now there's this is not everybody's opinion but that was a large part of this like hashtag discourse was black women rage and that's the point and getting back and the Becky with the good hair was like and all of that and so Beyonce in that album said in that song said I got hot sauce in my bag swag it was interpreted by many to be a celebration of blackness I think one of the lyrics is also like something like no matter how much I think that's the lyric something like made all this money but they'll never take the country I got I got hot sauce in my bag, swag. So she's saying, I have money, but I'm retaining this part of my identity. But again, it's country is not race, right? But it was interpreted by people to be a celebration of blackness. And so in the context of this historical moment, I can see how it could have been like, Beyonce's lyric, hot sauce in the bag swag was huge. Beyonce has hot sauce in her bag, I have Heinz ketchup. You know, can we get back to Beyonce? Can we just get back to Beyonce for a second? Specifically, I need to talk about the hot sauce thing. It was cool and like it, it resonated with people and this is them using that. I don't remember what I thought. I, I hope, I hope and I would like to believe that even though at this time I was much more like Democrat leaning politically, I. 2016, I did vote for Hillary Clinton this year, so maybe I didn't see it, but I would like to think that I would have been able to identify this as pandering. I hope. I'm gonna see this and say, okay, she's pandering to black people. <laughs> <laughs> it looks all acted out. Okay. Is it working? Yeah. <laughs> it's like she delivered her line and then her character broke and she literally was at the clown school like years later anyway this is the same year or maybe the next year she went had that dinner with uh i'll insert the clip right here from the radio show context to our listeners if they yeah. don't know you've been accused essentially of, of of doing black magic in order to help hillary clinton i mean that's that's kind of where we are with spirit, this. Creating spirit cooking dinner right. with a pig blood, <laughs> yeah, exactly, basically. Right. Okay. But that happened that same year. And then, uh, then did y'all know Hillary and her daughter Chelsea, they went on to the Apple TV. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. And they made a reality television show in the style of like Darcy and Stacey meets The Simple Life. It's literally like The Simple Life with Hillary Clinton and her daughter Chelsea. <sighs> It was something, it was something to behold. And I only really, well, how to make it through maybe, maybe made it through one episode. It was hard too. Just the most uninteresting. And then the reason I had to watch this episode is clown school. So what had happened was I had seen another clip, which we can watch here, of Hillary Clinton talking to a so-called 100 year old clown. And I mean, one of the things about this reality show that they did is it's, it's really heavy on the women, like women thing. Like it's Hillary Clinton is asking some very weird questions. It's almost like she's just kind of figuring out like what people talk about or something. She's like, really, she reminds me a lot of watching Caitlyn Jenner on Caitlyn Jenner's, uh, remember she did a little reality show yeah. and it's like, you know, she wasn't doing anything like necessarily like overtly like horrible, but it's just like, oh man, the way she's interacting with people and the way people are shooting looks at her. And it's Hello, like, fellow humans. it's giving Mark Zuckerberg at the UFC fight. And um, I'll pull that hundred year old clown clip up y'all, but it is it is taken from the Darcy and Stacy simple life that Hillary and her daughter Chelsea did. And poor Chelsea, I, oh God, I don't know. I feel bad for her. Like, I feel like that's just a result of like never being able to like really like be like wild and free and like, like run around barefoot and like she's from Arkansas for the love of God. I mean, didn't she grow up there? That's a girl from Arkansas and that's how she act. They really got her in them schools early. I wonder if did she go to the high school? Probably not. That one's for hashtag troubled youth. She doesn't look like she ever been in trouble. hundred years. All roads leads to clowns. Hillary Clinton. We're just going to watch what's on YouTube and 
I encourage you to watch that other at your own risk. Oh my God. Then she went on the interview about the clown college. Maybe we can just put a couple clips in, but that one is, um, that's the one where she's wearing the Chris Jenner outfit. Inspector Gadget. Okay, it's 58 seconds. These Hillary Clinton clips are so jam-packed with body language and eye darts and just things you could just, it's 50, it's only 58 seconds and just so, wait till y'all hear what this clown actually has to say okay, in response to the stupid question. And you know what I did learn? And it's probably something a clown said once. Stupid questions gets stupid answers. The, this lady's like, how is it for women in comedy? Can women be funny? Like, I'm a girl. Like, I don't even think the sexists, like, think no women can be funny anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's 2022 at the time, y'all. This isn't even 2016. This is like a whole election cycle after. Philippe, what's the difference a for a woman in comedy than a man in comedy? Can they do the same no, thing? Comedy is okay, do? but clown is crazy. Philippe, what's the difference for a woman in comedy than a man in comedy? Can they do the same thing? I'm so glad the shady editor panned over to him going, <laughs> like this fucking 100 year old clown. You could just see him like snatching up a Steve-O. Like that wasn't funny and nobody laugh. <laughs> that was terrible. Comedy is okay, but clown is more difficult. Yeah. It's like such a sad guru answer. She's like, how is it for women in comedy? Can they be funny? Is it cool? Is it weird? What are they, what are they, what are they doing women in comedy? Man, Dan. And he's like, well, um, comedy is okay, but clown <laughs> is the most philosophical clown I ever saw in life. Not answering the question. <laughs> and then we got to start it all the way over one more because listen what the man says in response to how is it for women in comedy versus men. Then he decides to switch the goalpost from comedy to clown only. And that's totally different than comedy, apparently. And um, listen what he says. It's, it's, I don't know, you tell me. Philippe, what's the difference Philippe. for a woman Chelsea. in comedy than a man in comedy? Can they do the same thing? Comedy is okay, but clown is more difficult. Yes. Because if you are a young boy, you come home, your costume is completely dirty, or your mother still loves you. Yeah. Mm. If you are a girl, it's not sure your father still loves you. Mm. So, so much to unpack so much to unpack first of all first of all um if you're a boy it's easier to be a clown because your mother still loves you and if you come home dirty your mom will wash your clothes and if you're a girl maybe your father doesn't love you but what does the father have to do with the mother and then i don't know what he's trying to say exactly it's very very weird it's just a weird thing to be saying like even if i could sit with it for a minute and figure out like what he might mean like maybe he means it's difficult because you have to go through a lot of times where you don't have time to like take care of yourself at home and somebody has to help you and for boys your mom might do that but for girls well you're gonna get who's gonna help you do maybe that's what he means right but you're not you don't know that that's what he means for first of all it's just like trying your very very hardest to make meaning onto it and i certainly would need some time i mean this was like yesterday the first time i heard i've been i've been having a long time to think about it and these people are all sitting around grinning and cheesing it up in this hundred year old clown's face like they know exactly what he's talking about they're like mm, i was gonna say that <laughs> that's what i was thinking mm. <laughs> so ah and it just reminds me of how fake you have to be and stuff. And now I'm to the point, I don't know what's real, what's not real. If this is how normal people have to go out there and act at like business meetings and stuff, because I definitely do remember like being in corporate America and feeling like I was having to act like the shit that the hundred year old clown was saying was profound. I definitely remember being in some type of situations like that. And I'm like, mm, like I really needed a job. And I'm like, yeah, this airplane law is so interesting. This is, I want the clown to like me because he's a mean clown to other people. And I want to be on the mean clown's good side. That's what it's given to me. You ever felt guilty about something that you said to someone? Not at all. If you want to discover your clown, you have to hear audience and when they laugh, it's me. Mm. When they don't laugh, your clown is not close to your body. When audience laugh, your clown is not so far. But you don't just say, you've got a double zero. You say things like, you know, I'm, would you rather be in a concentration camp or would you rather watch yeah, this again? For you give who among these two person as an hostage to the German to shoot them. And it's like, just because somebody did some weird sh 
in France for 100 years doesn't mean that they're worth that much respect. I mean, maybe he is. Maybe he is. I don't know. But if a 100-year-old senile clown who's mean to people and has devoted his life to being a clown and letting, quote, clown infect him, then I'm not really that, like, tripping over myself. Like, you know, if this is my father-in-law and he's trying to, and I see him, I am, yeah, mm -hmm, that's how I'd act to him. You know, someone that I respect the most in the world. Not a 100-year-old senile clown who's mean to people and clearly inflamed. A woman is more dangerous mm. to be idiot like for a man. And we can see when you teach, a woman wants to be charming clown. Mm. But mm -hmm. I knew some woman, the monster, oh, fantastic, but not so many. I think I'm more of a monster. And this girl is <laughs> disgusting. Disgusting. She has this whole comedy act. I'm going to put none of it in here because it's nasty. But that also brought me to the last thing point I want to make about this video is like, why do they spend so much energy and effort? Like I became exhausted with the amount of like, yeah, straight men, the men, it's, you know how it is for us women. They said it so much that I feel like I never want to hear it again. They ruined it. Chelsea and Hillary Clinton ruined it. <sighs> like, you know, when you have a song that's like, you know, good or whatever, and you listen to it and like, a lot and then like it gets played somewhere where you drank too much tequila or something and then you can never enjoy the song again or something like that is how the entire women's empowerment movement is for me because of Hillary Clinton and Chelsea her daughter they ruined it they ruined it how is a man different in comedy than a woman and the, the men and the women and the men you know how men are you know and every single time that a female com comedian didn't get laughs it was because sexism it was exasperating and exhausting and it led to one comedian that said something so deranged and depraved i have to address it and just say nope mm -mm. one of them's up there talking about you know she's respectable and all of that and she's fine whatever but she's sitting up there talking about how like I don't know if it was because she was disabled or because some of these intersectionalities made it to where she got desexualized by the audience and I don't know what the definition means of that I can only postulate that it meant that she was trying to say it was somehow a bad thing that the audience wasn't seeing her as a sex object and that was to me a very important social commentary on where we are in 2022 on gutsy featuring Hillary Clinton and Chelsea, her daughter. But anyway, um, that's all I really had for today. Bye.